In this video, I will show you how to go from a static design in Figma to a production ready landing page in Framer. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. As always, if you want to follow along this video, I put the Figma link in the description below. To go from static designs in Figma to a real website, there are three main steps. First is to prepare your designs. Second is to copy your layers using the plugin into Framer. And then finally is to add the interactions and animations you want before you publish it. To prepare the designs, I will summarize it in three points. One, and I believe the most important one, is to use auto layout as much as possible. I found that the translation from auto layout to stacks and framer is almost perfect most of the time. Try to avoid frames and especially groups because you will have some issues when exporting them into framer. Second, if you have a frame, make sure that the constraints are all well set. Like for example here, this image is a frame and then this tag on the corner is linked to the top and right constraint. And finally, name your sections correctly because those names are going to be the same in Framer. As you can see, this landing page is already prepared. I have the whole landing page to be an auto layout and then each section is an auto layout and it has the correct names. Something else I want to mention is that if you have a project that where you know that you're going to use Framer to publish it, I will recommend to only design the desktop version in Figma because the way breakpoints behave in Framer is a little bit different. Mobile and tablet breakpoints are all linked to the desktop breakpoint. So I'll recommend to only export desktop and start working from there in Framer. Now to export your designs into Framer, of course, we're going to use the plugin, but I have three recommendations. And the first one is actually coming from Framer itself. You can read more about it here and that will open this page. Basically, the smaller, the better. So try not to export all your designs at once because you will find many issues with your layers. In this example, we're not going to export the whole landing page at once. We're going to do it section by section, first the navigation bar, then the hero section and so on. The second recommendation is to create a stack in Framer. Basically, make sure that your parent component in Framer is a, is a stack. And as a reminder, stacks out of layout are the same thing. And finally, right after you paste a layer, check, fix and repeat with the next section. So to export the navigation bar, all we need to do is to select the section from the plugin and then copy to clipboard. Now we go to Framer, we create a new project. Before pasting the layers, I will change the breakpoint size. I'm using 1512 in Figma, so I'll update it here. And now I select the breakpoint and press Command B. Now we're going to check the layers really quick. So I had the main navigation bar stack. I have my logo that was imported as a vector. And then I have another auto layout that has navigation items and my button. Good. And also if I go to preview, I can see that it's also responsive. Now we're going to do the same thing for the hero section. So we select the section and then a shortcut to run the last plugin is option command B. Copy to clipboard and then back to framer. Select the breakpoint and paste it pressing command B. Now we can make this a stack, so we select the breakpoint. Here we're going to add layout and make it a stack. Change the gap to zero. And here we can make the height fit content. And now as soon as we add new sections, the height will change. And same as with the navigation bar, you should quickly check all your layers after pasting the section. And now I will export all the other sections really quick.
of the frequently asked question can be improved. Ideally, for smaller screens, this would change to only one column instead of two. And I think it's also a good chance for me to show you how min and max and wrapping work here in Framer. So we only want to work with one row and then we're going to duplicate it. So I will delete this and this. Then now I need to make sure that the prime component are all set to fill. So here I change this to fill. Then I need to add a minimum width to these questions. And I will make it 500. I'll do the same thing for this one. Once we have the minimum defined, I can select the prime component and make it grab. Now if we set it correctly. I can go to preview, make this smaller, and there you go. By the way, to get quick access to preview, I press command P. Now we're going to start the fun part that is adding the interactions and animations in Framer. First, these two links on the navigation bar should take us to those sections. So the first step for that is actually adding a scrolling section. For that, we select the section, then we scroll to scroll section. And we add a name. This will be hero. I'll call this details. Go back to scroll section. This is the partner section. And then this is the FAQ. And finally, this is the, the footer. Once we have the sections defined, we can select these items at the link. Here we select the same page. And here we have the sections that we just defined. So FAQ to take us to FAQ and we can define it to make it smooth. Then for the partner section, the same thing. And now if I preview this, I click and the page scrolls to the right section. I also want to show you how to make this sticky scrolling. So in this example, I want to make the screen section sticky. I select the section and change the position to sticky. And now if I directly go to preview, I scroll and nothing happens. And that's a very common question in Framer. And the reason is because all the parent components should be set to visible. And right now, if I select the, the parent component, the overflow is hidden. So if I change this to visible and then I preview, I scroll and I have the sticky effect. If you're liking this video so far, I only have one request for you, and that's to click the like button below. It will take you probably less than a second, but it really helps the channel. Thank you. I also want to show you how to work with components and how to create a hover effect. I will create a component of this button. I will press Option Command K and leave the name as button. It will take me to a separate menu and here I can go back to home. I can also find this component here in the asset tab. Click again here. Here we can add a hover effect. I will click and press hover. And now I can customize how I want this button to look. Let's say I just want to make it a little bit darker. And if I click on the parent component, I can also play around with the transition. Here I have a spring. I can change it to ease or I can also change the settings of the spring. And now if I go back to home and preview, I have the hover effect. I left the best for the end and that's scroll transform. Definitely one of my favorite features in Framer. So for that, I will select this grid section. We're going to scroll to effect, click here and select scroll transform. Here you have the trigger and we're going to select layer in view. Basically, that means that as soon as this layer is visible, the animation will start. I want to scale from 0.6. Then I want a 3D rotation and this will be 10. And then I will move it upward a little bit. I can press shift to make it faster. And then I will change the opacity to zero. And you can also add a transition on top of that. So here we're going to add a spring. And now I preview. And when I scroll, I have this cool animation. And the best of all is that you can also nest transforms. 
So if I select this element, I can add here in the fact again, go to scroll transform. And this time I will make section in view and I will select the detail section from, I want to start from opacity one and I will make it bigger, maybe like this. And now I will center this. And I will add a transition. Now, if I go back to preview, I scroll, I have this amazing animation. So to summarize what we did, we start from a static design in Figma. We prepared our designs using auto layout. We set the right constraints and name our sections correctly. Then we use a plugin to copy and paste each section into Framer. In Framer, we add a click to scroll. We add a sticky scrolling animation. We also briefly saw how components work and set a hover effect. And finally, we end with a scroll transform to create this amazing animation. And these are just the basics of Framer. If you want to learn more about it, follow me and see you on my next tutorial. Bye-bye.